This is Pasties Herb. We are a team on an assignment to build the fate of men and set their hearts on fire through the media system. With hundreds of insightful videos here on our channel, we hope to bless and bond with you. Don't forget to click the like button, turn on notifications, and subscribe. We love and celebrate you. Whoever you want. If you to want to be famous, lift, if God wants to Lord, lift you, you can and lift announce you through to the world me. from Nigeria, your feet Where must touch Lagos. There are two cities your feet must touch, Abelkuta and Lagos. If your feet does not touch it prophetically, your voice will not be heard from this nation because there is a covenant. In the realm of the spirit, Abelkuta gave birth to Lagos. To teach you this morning on the covenant of financial prosperity why God wants you to prosper and I want you to know I've been poor I've been blessed and blessed is better because my poverty helped no one but the devil the only one who rejoiced that my poverty was Satan and whenever I, I walk in prosperity everyone around me gets blessed even people I don't know I have two girls in the university in Ghana and Dr. Mensah Autobills. Oh, by the way, my friend Autobill blessed you during the conference. We've been friends for like 24 years. Uh, he's been preaching for me for 24 years. I open his conference every year. And uh, praise God. I have two young ladies who go to a university started by one of the guys who came out of his who, who who's from his church i don't even know these girls they are just one of them is a caddy who pulls our bag whenever we play golf in a Kedja golf course and she spoke good english and i said what are you doing here and she said well i've tried jam five times and i don't have money for private school what do you want to read hotel management and hospitality I just called the university in Ghana. I'm paying $7,000 every year. And she's graduating in a couple of months. Listen, broke does not help broke. It's not possible. I, I, I only met her mom once. Her mom is a cleaner in the university. I mean, sorry, in, uh, in, in, at the airport. And if I meet her mom on the road right now, I wouldn't recognize her. I just picked up the girl. She is too excited. In fact, in the university, they call her Pastor Matthew's daughter. <laughs> Second girl also, her mom sells small, small, two, 200 naira rice to the caddies who carry her bag. Husband died, left her five children. And this girl is the last born. And she walked up to me one day and said, I'd like to do same course again, hospitality and hotel management. They've taken it, they've given me admission, uh, Mashuda Biola Polytechnic. I just told her, go to my office, fill an application, and we paid for her. She finished OND, I didn't even know. She came to me and said, I finished my OND. I said, who are you? <laughs> she said, you sent me to Polytechnic. Oh, really, did I? And uh, I, I said, what next? She says she wants to do HND. I said, no, I know a university in Ghana. I just called my, the guy who owns the university is my son, really. I said, another student for you. She's now in 300 level. <laughs> broke does not help broke. So if anyone is attacking biblical principles, don't join them. You've got to know why do we believe what we believe. The Bible says be ready always to give an answer as to the hope that is in you. So this morning, I'm just going to teach. The, the enemy of the gospel knows it takes resources to further his own agenda. Satan's agenda requires money. So is the agenda of the kingdom. Satan also knows the golden rule. The golden rule is this. He who has the gold rules. 
Because your teachers told you the golden rule is do, uh, do unto men what you want them to do to you. Bless them. No, 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 no. The golden rule is he who has the gold rules. Even in Nigeria. Anywhere you go in the world. He who has the gold rules. Let me make a statement that may be slightly controversial. One or two politicians in Nigeria will say they will declare themselves winners. They know they don't even need to hire a high-end lawyer. All they need is enough money to take care of the judge. He who has the gold rules. Nations with the greatest financial resources also have the greatest militaries. Is it not so? And they exact the most powers. For example, America just rose one morning, decided to blast a general of Iran to kingdom come. Nigeria doesn't like Iran. That's why Zakizaki is suffering. Because Nigeria is Sunni Islam. Iran is Shiite. Will Nigeria wake up one day and say, want to go and bomb Iran? Hmm, who born you? Because finance matters in the world in which we live. Are you ready for this morning's teaching? I said, are you ready? The wealth with the en which the enemy has amassed for the funding and propagation of evil in the world is staggering. The illicit drug business in the world is $400 billion a year. Illicit drug is $400 billion a year. Total church income, Nigeria, United States, United Kingdom, global, everywhere, is $161 billion. $161 billion. And 35% of that is the United States of America alone. So the whole church is globally, from Australia to South Africa, from Nigeria to Congo, from Congo to the whole of Europe, to the Middle East, to the south, to the south, the west, the east, the north, is $161 billion. That drug trade alone is $400 billion. The pornographic industry is $200 billion every year. Just the money people spend on pornography is more than the income of the churches globally. The global spending people do on psychics and palm readers and clairvoyants is $150 billion. So with this, the wickedness and lawlessness in our world generates trillions of dollars to propagate satanic evil. So we, the body of Christ, need to be able to say truly, if our God owns the universe, then we must see the manifestation of the church. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and what? The fullness thereof and the, and the people that dwell therein. The Bible says that our God owns the cattle upon a thousand hills and even the hills on which they stand. Because when God wants to bless you, when he gives you land, he gives you three things in land. What is under, what is on top, and what is above. That's why the best thing you can ever have in life is real estate. Because real estate is the only estate that is real. Cars come and go. Clothings come and go. Today it's double-breasted suit. Tomorrow it could be single. Tomorrow it might even be suit with torn behind. But you see, real estate is the estate that is real. This place was a bush 40 years ago. Where's Amu word of in that way? Okay, where is, okay. Okay, this is the hope, this whole place is Amu word. Where's the beginning, which is like when you are coming from a Ajegunle? My brother used to stay in a house that was not completed while he worked in Ojo Barracks. This place was a forest. 
I came to stay with him in 1973 on my way to Bible school. I resumed Bible school January 2, 1974, 46 years ago. So this forest, which was probably 200 naira, you are about to buy 1.2 billion. Because real estate is the only estate. And there are people who had the opportunity, but they loved at it. But I see this church smiling in a few years' time. Because yeah. as you make the vision of this house happen, your own vision will happen. Yeah. Your destiny will manifest. Yeah. But you see, we've got to realize biblical truth is biblical truth. You don't let somebody, some, somebody, whether it's a radio DJ or something, mess up the truth you believe. Because of lies spoken against the tithe and offering. Income in Lagos churches fell by 40%. 40%, yeah. 40%. Why? Because some Christians just, they just kept following social media and the next thing they're doing is, it's true, it's true. What is true? What is true? When the Bible says be ready always to explain the reason for the hope that is in you. Believers must come to that understanding that if we must change a city, we must own it. How do you change a city? Own it. Not just putting speakers outside, making noise. Just shouting all over the place. Hey, what can you do? Carry you you got to own the city. Touch your neighbor, say, let's own this city. And in case you don't yet get what I'm saying, I'm just laying foundation. 20, uh, Jesus spoke 37 parables. Jesus spoke how many parables? And out of the 37 parables, 23 had to do with economics. 23 parables had to do with economics. Roughly, that is 61% of the parables of Jesus. They all had to do with finance, with economics. There are a thousand and one subjects Jesus could have enumerated, expantiated, but he spent 61% of his teaching on finance. Many of the parables pastors will use for altar call are economics. Give me three or four parables. Just tell me. The sower, the parable of the sower is about investment. Sowing in good land and not sowing where your investment is choked by thorns, not sowing on rock where it will not even grow at all, and not sowing in a place where demonic birds are wait, waiting to eat it, but looking for good ground. Not every business they bring to you should you sow into. This week I've been approached with three businesses. Oh, we need 10 million here. Oh, come and buy this person. We need that million. And I read their approach. Their, 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 their proposal, I can't see the marketing because that's where the money is. How do you intend to sell the idea? Anyone can come up with idea. Another one approaches me and says, we have this bureau to change. This is the amount. This is the profit every day. We've already been running it. We just want to sell. I said, why are you selling if you are making this amount? They said, well, because they are busy and they have a bereavement and they don't have money. It sounds like something I like to do. It makes sense. Parable of the sower. Another one. Huh? Parable of the talent. When Jesus spoke the parable of the talent, talent in Bible times is not the ability to dance, do shaku shaku, or be body. Talent in Bible times was like a gold bullion. So the man who was given five talents, each talent was $554,000 of today's money. So that guy was given $2.5 million roughly. The guy who was given one talent was given half a million dollars. Close to 180 million naira to do business. How many of you can manage 180 million naira? Let me see you. You can manage it to start a small, a small corner side business.
But he went and buried it, which Jesus was trying to show that you have resources don't mean you have capacity. It's because prosperity or poverty starts with the mind. The lender and the borrower always are in the same city. They are always in the same city. Some of them went to the same school. But their decisions kept them where they are. Almost all the parables, several of them, 61%. Give me one more. The parable, oh no, the 10 virgins, that one no be economic, so. <laughs> but in a sense, it's also economics. Five were wise. They thought ahead because that's how to run anything in life. If you cannot predict tomorrow before tomorrow, you keep living in today. The reason your pastor is saying, let's go buy that place is because he can see if this is what the Lord has done for us in this number of years. Imagine what will happen if God gave us a bigger harvest. Because you've got to understand, there's something called sociological strangulation in church. Once a church gets too full, word gets out. You want to go where? Don't go there. The place is too full. Then nobody comes anymore. But as you make more room, the Lord will send more people. I said the Lord will send more people. So five virgins were, were, were wise. Five were foolish. The foolish one were singing church song. I know my Lord will make a way for me. They don't realize God will never bypass your cerebral capacity. He gave you a brain. There are things God will not do for you. He already gave you a mind. That's why you are not a lion, you are not an elephant. 2,000 years now, 4,000 years, 6,000 years, elephants have not changed their diet. But man, we know how to take one thing and turn it to 1,000 meals because we have creative skills. Praise God. Just one more talent and one more parable. Lost coin. Thank you for that one. In fact, Luke chapter 15, there are three economic parables there. Lost son, lost silver, lost sheep. Lost son, the guy went to his dad and asked for his own inheritance before the father died. That's economics. If your papa no get anything, you don't go worry him. Where do you want to inherit? When the man no invest anything, he had no mind of investment. In fact, he thinks, let's just work hard. All he knows is work hard. He doesn't know how to invest. He doesn't know the law of geometric proportion. So the boy saw something to inherit. But unfortunately, he knew how to be a big spender, not a big investor. A couple of years, he had finished everything the father gave him. Second one was the lost silver. I use SSS so you can remember. Lost son, lost silver, and lost sheep. Silver, in Hebrew culture, a, woman, a woman's dowry does not stay with the woman now. It is given to her. She places it on her gele so that when you are whistling to girls around, once you see the silver, ah, that one has a, oh, lo, lo, wo, eh, she has an owner. You move on to look for another lady. So this woman's symbol of possession, symbol of ownership, which is money on her headgear, was lost. She had to look for it. Lost sheep. The man had a hundred sheep. How many got lost? That was his in. So he left 99, the capital, to go look for the one, the prophet. So the church needs to realize if it's important to Jesus that he spent 61% of his parables. On finance, it must be important to me. So, 
More and more Christians, I believe, in these last days are going to walk in the realm of millions. You are coming out of obscurity. You will come into an understanding that you own the land. Nigeria does not belong to unbelievers. It belongs to you. And you will take possession. Shout, I receive. Let me give you one more reason why you should believe in prosperity. I'm the only pastor who have produced a Bible on prayer. You go out there where they are selling my books. There's a power of positive prayer Bible with 15,000 prayer points. But go after service. Google and check. You'll find that the word pray, prayer, praying. In the whole Bible, there are 375. But when it comes to finance, there are more than 2,000 references. So on prayer, 375, direct and indirect. On finance, how many references? 2,000. So it means that economics is important to God. Let me give you another one. There is no one God signed covenant with whom he did not give land. Everyone God signed covenant with, he gave land. Adamic covenant. Did God give Adam land? Abrahamic covenant. Did God give Abraham land? Uh, Noahic covenant. Did God give Noah land? Uh, Mosaic covenant. Did God give Moses and the people Canaan land? Davidic covenant. Did God give David land? Everyone God signs covenant with. He gives them an economic instrument. You will not serve the Lord in vain. But rather your hands will handle great things. Your eyes will see great things. I pray for everyone who's listening to me as you come into covenant with God, you will walk in abundance. Amen. Shout amen again. Amen. So the covenant of prosperity is a covenant. I like you to say it's a covenant. So one day, 38, it's going to be 39 years in August. I stood before a preacher and I said, I, Matthew Ashimalo, take you, hear me see, to be my lawful wedded wife to have and to hold from this day forward and with all my worldly goods at that time I didn't have anything so it was very easy to say <laughs> and with all my worldly goods I thee endow it means everything I have in this covenant now belongs to you and I know that many people once they get blessed they don't take that statement serious, but I take it it's more serious. I've been blessed. I've seen the blessings of the Lord, but I say it whenever I preach in London, in our church. I let the congregation know. I've written my will, and my will is very simple. It just says that everything I own, I pass to my wife. So my sons, if they need, if they want anything, they better take care of their mother, because they were not around. When I made the covenants, they were not around when the blessings began. So if they want anything, take care of your mother. Of course, they are directors in my company, but I've already bypassed them in the will. In the same vein, Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Why? That he may establish his covenant, his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. So tell your neighbor it's a covenant. It's a covenant. Say like you mean it, it's a covenant. it's a covenant. And listen to me today, this covenant is not controlled by what you sell or the business you do. It is not controlled by the economy of Nigeria. You can live in Nigeria and be more prosperous than someone who lives in America. Your labor is not the reason for prosperity, even though Malikorian de Rosia. God needs a platform to put the blessing on. Someone say platform. Deuteronomy 28 verse 5 to 12 talks about three platforms. You bless the work of your hand. You bless your basket. Then you bless your storehouse. The three are different levels. Work of hand is salary. Basket is SME, small and medium enterprise. 
and then storehouse is when God takes you to the level where you are a, a hirer of 50 people and more. And that's the reason why this teaching is necessary. As great as our churches are in Nigeria, we are just beginning to tap into what God has for us. The majority of us are not hiring anyone. We don't even have 50 staff. And until you reach that place, you have not tapped into a storehouse. So this is your year. Yeah. And I love the theme, all things are ready. And you are tapping into it. Yeah. No man will be able to stop you. Yeah. If you believe it, shout yes. yes. So listen, the greatest source of a man's blessing is the light available to him. The greatest source of a man's blessing is the light available to him. If you have no light in an area, you wouldn't know. Some people have no light in certain areas. They don't see the blessing. And so I pray that your eyes will see and your hands will handle. Amen. Let me define for you what is a covenant. If I talk of the covenant of prosperity, what is a covenant? A covenant is the deed constituting the evidence of your legal ownership. The deed constituting the evidence of your legal ownership. The man who sold this land to the church deeded this land to the church and signed off and there was a binding contract on either the man or the family in the Amu world of area and it bound them and was no longer their own. God is bound to you. Jeremiah 31 verse 31 to 33. Jeremiah 31 verse 31 to 33. Behold the days are coming. Says the Lord when I will make a new covenant. With the house of Israel. And with the house of Judah. Verse 32. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day. That I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Which my covenant they broke. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. And if you are his people, then it, belong, it means that Everything that belongs to him belongs to you. Because the Bible says, and we are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Glory to God. So this covenant calls us special treasure. Let me rush it. Exodus 19 verse 5. It calls us special treasure. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 to 10 calls us kings and priests. Kings and priests. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 calls us a holy nation. Exodus 23 verse 22 says he will be an enemy to our enemy. God will be an enemy to your enemy. Exodus 23 verse 25 says he will bless your daily provision. Your daily provision. Exodus 23 verse 25 also says he will take away sickness from among us. Then Deuteronomy 440 says he will prolong our days upon the earth. Tell your neighbor you will live long. Live Look at someone tell them you will live strong. Live strong. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 37, 38 says he will drive out the enemy from before us. There are some things that are already settled in the covenant. Tell your neighbor it's in the covenant. Say it like you mean it, it's in the covenant. Deuteronomy 7, 13, he will bless and multiply us. Deuteronomy 28, verse 3, he will bless you in the city, he will bless you in the country. Listen, while yes, statistically 60% of business done in the whole of Nigeria is done in Lagos. And 55% of VAT. Paid in the whole of Nigeria. It's paid in Lagos. But do you know if God says to a person, and it's not that they receive a revelation after eating too much, um, whatever they ate. 
If God says to a person here, pack your bag and move to Asia Mobiato, <laughs> you will be shocked that in that place, we are the ones going to see what the Lord has done. God's blessing is connected to his instruction. Get thee out of this place to Zarephath. Where I have commanded who? If God wants command, you were expecting to say, I've commanded Dangote to feed you. He said, a widow. And you met the woman. She said, even me, I had a struggle. You begin to wonder, did I hear God? But you heard him. And this covenant will work for you. Amen. Oh, your amen is very weak. Amen. In the covenant, Deuteronomy 28, 1, it says you will be above the nations of the earth. Above the nations of the earth. Now look at me when it says above the nations of the earth. Don't immediately think Nigerian. The word nation in the Greek is ethnos. Ethnos. Ethnos can be David Christian Center. You are a nation. You are a nation. You are a nation. And if you receive revelation. You can be in a place where people are depressed. And you are far above all. You are always above. Somebody scream, I'm above. I'm above. Then he said he will, bless, he will put his blessing on your children. Deuteronomy 28, 4. He said he will, he will put his blessing on your income and all your efforts. Deuteronomy 28, verse 8. He said he will continually increase you and give you supplies. Deuteronomy 28, verse 11. He said he has commanded his blessing that will Mareshka Helebaro overtake you so that before you reach tomorrow, there's provision for tomorrow. <laughs> Listen, look at me. You didn't just enter a new year. You entered a new decade. 2020, 2030. It's a whole decade. May this be the decade of favor. The decade of open doors. The decade of uncommon grace. The things you could never have achieved in the past years. Some of you in this one year. It shall become your reality. What your fathers could not even think of. Are coming into your hands. Shout amen again. Deuteronomy 28 11 says. You will abound in prosperity. Abound in goods, abound in children, abound in crops. Deuteronomy 28 verse 12 says, he will open the storehouse. These are in the covenant. When you read an agreement, you get to know the derivations of the, of the covenant. <laughs> Glory to God. Because they are your inalienable rights. Deuteronomy 28, 12 also says, God will bless the work of your hands. Open your hands. Open your hands. It's in the covenant that from now on, what you touch will not turn to ashes. It will work out. It will prosper. You will carry the evidence of grace. The evidence of abundance. Shout amen three times. Now, Deuteronomy 28 verse 12 says, you will only lend, you will not borrow. <laughs> you only lend, you will not borrow. Because the only thing that kills a man is borrowing. Nigeria is knee deep in borrowing. I come from a tiny state, and I don't know what kind of governors ruled my state. We are the second most borrowing in Nigeria, Oshun State. We produce nothing. And yet we have borrowed until borrowed. Five generations' money have been borrowed. Even the United States, which you hear of and see as a wealthy nation, it's 18 trillion dollars in debt. 18 
trillion dollars in debt. But as for your household, even with the great vision that the Lord will give you, the abundance to make it happen will be in your hands. And from now on, every prosperity God gives you, by the end of this year, it will not increase, it will multiply. Amen. And multiply. Amen. And multiply. Amen. And multiply. Amen. And multiply. Amen. Shout amen with power. Amen. Sit down, sit down, sit down. In this covenant, God said you'll be the head and not the tail. Deuteronomy 28 verse 13, you'll be the head and not the tail. I don't know who it is, but the day is coming in your life. You are in this church. When you will have what I, do, I was telling Pastor Yemisi, my wife, and then eventually I told our church. I said, you need to have GL money. And my wife said, which one is GL? I said, it was like the Holy Ghost ministered to me that in this decade, I'm going to walk in GL money. She said, tell, what is GL? I like suspending until my wife drags for some time. I said, GL means get lost. <laughs> get lost money. Ah! You got to the airport. Uh, they said, economy ticket don't finish. And business class is ten, is seven thousand dollars. Is is that all? Get lost. Give me the, the business class ticket. Receive. 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 That day is coming in your life. I said it's coming in your life. What, what, what states cannot do, you will do. I shut down Oshun State on Saturday. I was taking care of 23,000 widows. Not KRCC, me and my wife. Clothes, food, and money. We invited them from six cities. They came from about 12. We gave them a ticket, but the ticket went beyond the six cities. Towns I have never reached. People showed up. It was God who helped us. The stampede, the whole of my town, my town is such a tiny town. The amount of downfalls in the whole town. What is happening here? 23,000 widows. No be being so. And the woman went tears because this is the 14th year. And some of us then were saying, Government don't do this. I'm not government. Far above. I am kingdom before I'm Nigerian. I am kingdom before I'm British. I'm kingdom before I'm Yoruba. I'm kingdom before I'm a man. Somebody scream, I am kingdom. May the favor of the kingdom rest on you. Amen. Shout amen powerfully. Amen. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. So this covenant is a contract. And this contract involves two people. You and God. And 90% is God. He's already written what he wants to give you. And listen, what he wants to give you exceeds what you can handle. I have not yet seen ear I've not heard hasn't come to the understanding of man what God does what has in store do you know how big your God is this universe is so huge there are no less than one trillion stars quasars asteroids black holes supernovas Galaxies, Andromeda galaxy, Milky Way galaxy. Every star you see in the sky, the nearest one will take five million years to get there. And my father <laughs> spoke it into existence. <laughs> if he can do all this, how 
will he not provide what I need to make my life colorful? You know, sometimes you are watching television. Black and white just change to color. That's how your life is about to change. If you are the one, shout, I receive it. I receive it. Listen, this is covenant. This is not hype. Tell your neighbor, this is covenant. You know, some of us will believe man more than God. If the Queen of England were to just show up in Nigeria and say, hey, where's the so-and-so person? Where's Chioma? Uh, and she said, oh, I am Chioma. And the, and the Queen of England said, God said I should adopt you. Hey, Chioma will be rolling on the ground. But the Queen of England, what she has is infinitesimal compared to what our father has. Is someone hearing me this morning? And your father has a covenant with you. And he said, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the word that proceeds from my mouth. God is the covenantor. You are the covenantee. You are the beneficiary of the deal. All you need to do is to have a good understanding of what the covenant entails and you will be up in abundance. So how do you establish your, co your, your covenant confidence in this, uh, in this covenant? How do you establish your confidence in this covenant? Psalm 89 verse 34. God says, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the words that went out of my lips. The scripture shows us God is a covenant keeper. We sing it covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. He is a covenant keeping God. Sometimes you think he forgot. 2,000 years later, he raises it up. One time he told Saul, the Gibeonites did not, meet with my, did not meet my children with water when they were coming from Egypt. That's 1,500 years later. 1,500 years. He said, go and fight them. They did not take care of Israel, my firstborn. That's why God killed the firstborn in Egypt. Because Israel was his firstborn after, after inheritance. We are the firstborn after the, after the resurrection. Glory to God. I see something happening. And James chapter 1 verse 17 says, With him there is no variableness. All you need to do is believe the covenant. God is not a God of whites. I hate blacks. All he does is who believes and who can hold to my word. If you believe his word and hold on to his word, he will work for you. Once you locate the covenant and you enter into it, the struggle is over. And for somebody here, the struggle is over. Yeah. I said the struggle is over. Yeah. I say again, the struggle is over. Yeah. When you enter into the covenant and you sign in, 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 12 and verse 15, things begin to work for you. So it is time for you to enter. Already the day you give your life to Christ, that's why I, get, I just get worried when the church make people testify about being born again and stopping at, hey, I used to smoke. I know they smoke again. I used to drink. I know they drink. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. The day you get born again, you change families. And everything that belongs to God is now yours. You are now a joint heir with Christ. Joint hair gives you three things in law. Equality of power, equality of possession, and equality of position. Equality of power. It's really humbling that Jesus will say, the works that I do, you will do, and greater works. Equality of power. Equality of possession. Possession. Possession and equality of position. Quality of position. That's why we are seated with him. Where? In the heavenly places, not under. Side by side. We are seated with him in the heavenly places. Wherever Jesus is, that's where we will be. Not under, not purgatory. Yeah, for those of us who still believe in. Uh, I don't know, 
Not pocket truth, but wherever Jesus is, someone said, that's my covenant. Our teaching is that the power to get wealth is released on the platform of a covenant. Nikali Brusia. Once you have a light illumination, light shine on your face on an area of prosperity, and your eyes open, if you sow sand, God will breathe on it, and sand will sell. Because you are operating not by strength, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. When you have covenant with God, your life does not make sense. I've been to Israel seven times. It still doesn't make sense. Their land is too rocky and full of stones. And yet their exports to England in fruit alone is a billion dollars. Oh, guess where the fruits are grown? Negev Desert. How can that be? Isaiah 48. No, Isaiah 45. And Isaiah 48, he said, The day shall come when streams shall flow where? And in 1986, boom! The Negev Desert opened up and the, and, and the stream began to flow. Because God's word cannot, cannot, cannot fail. Listen, the poverty of your father's house because of the work of the gospel in your life, I set you free from it. I cut you free from it. I cut you free from it. If you believe it, shout out of sea. Never let your father's limitation stop you. You now belong in a new family. You now have a new father. Jesus said, on this manner you shall pray, our Father, who art in heaven. It's not supposed to be a, re a recitation. It's a whole narikush this. A teaching to reclaim your hard disk. Or maybe you don't know. It is only in Christianity that God is called Father. He's not called Father in Islam. In fact, you're a slave. I used to be Ahmed, so I know. He's not called Father in Buddhism. It's not called father in Hinduism. Guess what? Even Judaism that gave birth to Christianity does not address God as father. It is only in Christianity that we are given this elevated position that God is now our father. Ah! By this revelation, your life will change. I said your story will change. Your life will change. Every time you reach a crossroad from today, as you remember the reality of his fatherhood, something will turn around. I said something will turn around. God is committed to you day and night to fulfill his covenant. Do you run? I mean, Jeremiah 33, verse 20 and 21. Jeremiah 33, verse 20 and 21. He said, except my covenant with night and day be broken. Thus said the Lord, if you can break my agreement with the day, that there be no day. And my agreement, I use the word agreement, agreement, contract are too weak. They are not comparable to the word contract, a covenant. Because in agreement, you can just grab, grab paper. All those are munile. They'll be writing the agreement while they are selling to another man. Covenant, your neck is on, the, on it. That's why in the Bible times, whenever they signed a covenant, Hebrews had nine ways they signed covenant. One of the ways they signed covenant was to slaughter an animal. And the animal being slaughtered, they will have to cut the animal in two. And it falls apart. And they are saying, may my life be like this animal. If I break this covenant. They cut it in two. Half and half. So he said, unless my agreement with night and day is broken. And there should be no more day. No more night. Next verse. Next verse. Verse 22. He said, unless that. Then my covenant may also be broken. With David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne. And with the Levites, 
the priests, my ministers. God said, unless this can happen. And it cannot happen. He spoke the universe into existence and regulates everything by the breath of his spirit. He puts everything in motion and nothing had ever gone wrong. So just as he's committed to David, he's committed to you. Listen, I may not reach the end of my teaching today because of time, but what I want you to go home with is to never forget it's in the covenant that I should be blessed. It's in the covenant that I should prosper. And where I am now, it's no proof that God hates me. Because I don't have money does not mean I won't have. And it does not mean I'm not blessed. I am blessed. Meow is not the cat. Roof, roof is not the dog. Moo is not the cow. It's just a proof that there is a dog, there is a cat, and there is a cow. So if there is no car that I parked outside, it is not a proof that I'm not blessed. One day I will park my own. Did you hear me? How many of you are saying one day I'll park my own? Let me see your hand. And listen also. Lagos is not complete until you build your own house. Shout it. Don't let nobody make you feel less. Sit down, sit down. When I was in Bible school, I was in Bible school in Ikorodu, four square Bible school. I would take five Kobo bus from Ikorodu to maybe Gobi. Another one from Ibobi to a jegle, 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 boundary, boundary. That makes 10 kobo from Ikorodu. Then I walk from jegle to Amuwo, where my brother was. Travel the same way back to Ikorodu. How much did I come to collect from him? He was a soldier, 10 naira. As a student in Bible school. My first year in Bible school on a Sunday morning, Pastor. Sunday service ended in the corridor. I was going back to Bible school. I was dressed like this. Suddenly, my shoe opened like a crocodile. <laughs> and I was walking with a lady who's also a student. So I had to be dragging my leg for seven kilometers. <laughs> Poverty must die in your life. <laughs> Because how do you remove shoe and be shoeless with a suit and tie? <laughs> so let nobody think because you don't have, you won't have. You are just awaiting manifestation. <laughs> Tell somebody, I'm just awaiting manifestation. <laughs> I don't know what your vision is. I don't know what you are dreaming about. But I declare as I have stood on this altar, before December 31, 12 midnight you will go from manifestation to reality Amen. 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 to reality together give God a bigger praise. When I leave the church here today, my driver and police will be taking car number 45 to go and bless a pastor. I've given away 45 cars in four and a half years. I'm giving away a Homer 3 today. I just told you how I used to work out. Sometimes you come that time, you may not even see, but you go begin work out from Amu. So when I reach your relay, I go see Moto. You reach Orile, you know Simoto. I can't walk out from Orile, reach, reach uh, Gobi. Ogene. I cannot forget coming to Lagos to collect that money the day they killed Murtala. No boss. And oh boy, I must collect this money. 
Because if I don't collect, no way to eat for Bible school. I can't force Waka. Once I reach Bobby, I Waka reach Orile, no moto, Jegunle, no moto. By the time I reach Ojo, I Waka reach Ojo for 10 naira. You know those social media ninjas don't see you that time. But when you begin to drive a car that is bad, that's when they see you. But <laughs> once you marry, you know. Once she marry, you know. Who don't know you go know you? Who don't see you go see you? Who don't hear you go hear you? It's in the covenant. It's in the covenant. Verse 25 to 26 of the passage which we read says, Thus saith the Lord, If my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. You know where this was written? The people were in Babylon. By the rivers of Babylon There we sat down Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They were serving in slavery. Back breaking. Hand have become callous. Then God said, I've seen your pain. You are going back home. I have a covenant with you. You came here because you disobeyed me, but I'm taking you back. Somebody is going back to their testimony. You're going back to your favor. You're going back to your breakthrough. Look at your neighbor, tell them it won't be long. It won't be long. It won't be long. But chance you got to give God praise. Come on. Stay with me. I'm going to close very soon. So, <clears throat> from this passage, we see that God is committed to cause every prosperity that went away during a captivity, a slavery, to come back. God is committed to have mercy on us by his unchanging covenant. So, it is time to discover that covenant, enter into it, and settle in it, and not in the things that are around you. Don't be carried away. Nigeria is hard. Stop talking the state of the nation. Start speaking your own destiny. Stop. Stop. There is, don't, tell, don't let anybody say there's no money in circulation. Who told you? There's more money now than there has ever been. This is the generation that saw $3,000 billionaires. And in the next 10, 15 years, Jeff Bezos might become a trillionaire. This is the generation that saw the kind of money Nigeria has never seen. Even with the oil noise we make, even though 90% of Nigeria's earning external is from oil, yet all of oil is 10% of our GDP. So the remaining 90% is inside. Money they yell, yours is coming. Yours is coming. Because the day will come. And the reason God wants to prosper his people is for a day like this. For a conference like this. Next conference, coming year conferences, you'll be able to go to pastor. How much does this conference cost? <laughs> How much? And pastor say, oh, plus flying everybody, this, this, this amount. You see, that's all. Please tell somebody to come and collect the check in my office. Shout and receive it. I was preaching in a church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The bishop of the church told me one of his members approached him and said, I'd like to sponsor a Reinhard Bonke crusade. I don't know how much it is, but pastor, before they tell you, here's a million dollars. If it's not enough, let me know. 
They called the office of Reinhard Bonke. And they told them they were about to go to Oshobo. That it would cost $750,000. So they said, what should we do with the balance? The man said, tell them to keep it as deposit for the next crusade. One man, one man, who, he doesn't have two heads. It is not the level of intelligence a man has that brings prosperity. The first is to engage in this covenant. The second is to find your own road. The third is to change your mind. Because if I can change your mind, I can change your income. If I cannot change your mind, I cannot change your income. I have, gen I have, I have cousins who, they just don't change their mind. And they wonder how God has blessed you and how you become a blessing. But they are not ready to change their mind. Today I see you move to a new level. Yeah. I see your story changing. Yeah. Listen to me today. The covenant also is in present terms. It is now. It works now. It works for this generation. The covenant of prosperity also prevails in any circumstance. Someone say any circumstance. Any circumstance. Say it again. Any circumstance. Any circumstance. There was famine. Genesis 12 verse 1 and 2. God therefore said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy kindred and out of thy people to a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless you. You will be a blessing. In thee shall all nations of the earth be blessed. He gets out. Chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Just a chapter later, he became rich in cattle and gold and silver. Just the next chapter. Just the next chapter. Hey, hey. Look at your neighbor. Tell them my next chapter, my next chapter. is a chapter of testimony. I'm coming out of the present chapter into a better chapter. Somebody here, yeah, your life is a book and the next chapter will be a testimony. Amen. It will be a testimony. Amen. It will be a testimony. Amen. It will be a testimony. Amen. When famine comes, you will prevail. Amen. Famine will not touch you. Amen. You will rise above it. Amen. Genesis 26 verse 1 and 2, there was famine. Isaac was packing his bag like Andrew. He wants to check out. God say, hey boy, don't move. It's not location alone that matters. It is allocation that matters. Stay in your current location to get your allocation. And so he stays. Verse 12 to 16. And Isaac prospered and went forward. And he got a hundredfold in that year and God blessed him. Then verse 13, then Isaac sold. He got prosperous. Verse 13 says, he went forward. He became prosperous until he became so rich and the Philistines did what? If you have not been talked about, you have not been blessed. If you have not commanded attention, and I'm talking generational wealth, because in Nigeria, only two or three families have ever had wealth that stayed for generations. After that, the rest of them are here today. Their children don't know how to perpetuate it. Where's the Kennedy Lechuku? Where's all those big names? Where's Darusha? Where's S.B. Bakari, who used to control the whole of the ports? But today I lay hands on you. What is coming to your house shall be for generations. Three and four generations. And your children will carry it also. Your grandchildren will carry it. Generational favor, Amen. generational testimony Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shout him and three times. Amen. 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 Sit down. So you see, Abraham prevailed. Why? He was under covenant. Isaac prevailed. Why? He was under covenant. Jacob prevailed. Jacob is a whole message. I call it the paradigm shift. Because it was the day he laid his head on a stone that the heavens opened. Anyone here who has been laying their head on a stone, even into 2020, the heavens will open for you in a way it has never opened. 
I said the heavens will open for you in a way it has never opened. You will walk in uncommon grace. Shout yeah! Joseph prevailed in the land of slavery. Potiphar prosper because of Joseph. Why? He's a son of covenant. They took him again. They threw him in the jailhouse. He got to the jailhouse, the place again, because he's a son of covenant. Some of you have your own business. Ah! I lay hands on you. That in this season that we're entering, your business will give back to favor. Give back to grace. Give back to abundance. The levels you never imagined are coming into your hands. They're coming into your life. Shout, I receive it. So when you begin to walk in covenant of prosperity and covenant of abundance, then you then realize that also you become profitable. When that profit comes, you must be a giver. Your giving provokes another divine blessing. Tithing provokes divine protection. Don't let nobody, nobody, nobody stops you from tithing. Don't let nobody tell you, oh, there's no tithing in New Testament. Says who? Oh, Geneme. New Testament is more powerful than Old Testament in tithing. No time to teach. Let me show you three verses of scripture. Hebrews 6.20. From Hebrews 6.20 to Hebrews 7.17. 7, and by the way, in case, look at me. The people who divided the Bible into chapters under King James, they were not Christians. They just were hired scholars. So they were putting chapters where they like, they just wake up, hire They just come. So chapter 6, verse 20 should be in chapter 7. The end of chapter 6, verse 20 says, Jesus Christ, the high priest, after who? Say it loud, please. And then in chapter 7, by verse 7 or verse 11, he repeats the same thing again. He says, Jesus Christ is also the high priest. After the, where is the verse? Put it on the screen for me quick. I think chapter 7, 11, I'm not sure now. 7, 11. Uh, 7, 11? No, 17 says so, but I think there is in 11. Look for 7, 7 or 7, 11. Yeah, 7, 11 is good. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there for another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of? So Jesus had two, two priests when he came. Please, you two gentlemen, come. I promise to dash you books. Just stand there. What's your name? Huh? Pedro. Jethro. Hish. Ogene. This man must be a wise man. <laughs> okay, these three books are called Answers to Money Problem. I give all of them to you. This one, 30 reasons why you should own your own company. This one, the power of tithing. This one, this is the future. Creativity is the future. I wrote a whole book on, when I told Bishop Oedeku about this book, he said, I need my copy right now. I said, I'll send it. I got to my forgot. Next time I got in a call, where's my book? Oh, yes, sir, okay. This one, many people wonder when I look at them and I begin to speak prophetically and it's so accurate. How to see, how to hear, and how to say Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Now help me to face the people. Help me to face the people. So Jesus comes. He needed to line up behind two priests. Aaron, Melchizedek. If he lined up behind Aaron, the moment the veil of the temple tore, that priesthood ends. So Jesus did not line up behind the priesthood of Aaron. You saw it there. But he lined up behind who? Melchizedek. When you are after an order, you must do what the order does. 
My father was a soldier. Nigerian army is after the order of the British army. All our generals, Babangida, Buhari, Obasanjo, Memalari, Zogu, Ojuku, they were trained in Sandhurst. So they salute like British. They do their things like British because they are after the order of the British. So Jesus is after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek received tithe. What should Jesus do? If you don't receive, you are out of order. That is the truth. Thank you, gentlemen. You can go see. And then verse 17. Within 20 minutes of writing, from 620 to 717, he repeats it three times. Jesus is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. After the order of Melchizedek. So you are when, when you are part of an order, you obey the order. So those radio DJs who were telling Christians not to tithe, they know where they are going. And they are looking for people to join them. And you need the blessings. If God asks me for 10, it's because he's about to give me a million. Is someone hearing me? I just told you I walked away from 44 cars. I'm about to give the 45th. The moment I decided that that one was going, somebody sent me the bus that came with me here now. This bus is a house inside. There's a massive television, fridge, everything, a massager on my seat. I've been no jealous. So. <laughs> let me close, let me close. I know I've taken quite some time. I got to close, I got to close, I got to close. I know that you guys, today is not a teaching day, and I haven't even reached the place where I needed to apply the covenant thing. But listen, the key issue, the key subject is this. God has no problem prospering you. From today, change your thinking. Wipe your mind. Stop saying philosophies Nigerians say. Stop saying K zira, zira, whatever will happen, will happen. No. You are a king. You are a priest. You are born to win. The day you got born again, there was a covenant to prosper you. From now on, the covenant applies to you. Amen. You cannot fail. Amen. Listen, listen. For you to fail, God will have to fail. But since God cannot fail, <laughs> you just have to prosper. And that's the reason he wants you to be able to do his work of the kingdom. To be able to, 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 to come and they, and they say, it's time to sow seed for you to walk away from some things and they didn't hold you. Somebody will see you when you were doing it and they think you're stupid. They didn't know you know what you're doing. That was a time I only had one vehicle in this Nigeria. And the Lord said to sow it into the life of a prophet I respect, an old man, Prophet Abiara. I drove it to his house, to where he is in Lagos, and took a taxi home. I'm flying back to England that day. It was, a, it was a Lincoln Navigator. I was among the first two to bring it to Nigeria. For his 70th, I bought him a brand new Hummer. A Hummer too. Because his grace had blessed me. So when we sow, it is not because the church is so desperate for what you have. God is trying to bring blessings to you. And he's creating bridges. The protocol of this kingdom is the protocol of sowing and reaping. The protocol of Nigeria is taxation. And have you noticed? Federal Inland Revenue have woken up. When they write you now, they don't beg you. They threaten you. They, we are coming. Show up. Get your account ready. We will lock your company. Uh, and you can't boast too because they have the powers of a high court. Their decision stands like a high court decision. They are not here to prosper you. They are takers, not givers. Governments are Indiana Jones and raiders of the cookie jar. But God is a giver. How many receivers are here? Shout, I'm a receiver. I'm a receiver. I'm getting ready. To receive what belongs to me. It won't be long. 
It won't be long. I'm walking in favor. I'm coming blessing. In the name of Jesus. Stand on your feet, put your hands together, give God the biggest praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Irabosha. Alireroshe. Alebroske barinde risko blederash. Lift your hand. I'm just going to pray briefly. Once again, it's a privilege to be here today. And I know for many of you it's a sacrifice. It should have been your chill out day, but you stayed to come and hear me. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Prosper your hand. Amen. May the oil of God rest on your life. Amen. Your destiny will manifest. Amen. Every word you heard today, tenfold, sixtyfold, hundredfold, Amen. will be your manifestation. God will give you testimonies. He will wipe your tears. Give you reasons to praise him. You will never go down. This covenant will work for you. If God did it before, he will do it again. So he will do it in your life. He will do it in your life. He will do it in your life. Some of the things you've been trusting God for will manifest in this season. Amen. Your eyes will see it. Amen. Your hands will handle it. Amen. And your mouth will testify. Amen. I like to prophesy to you that it's not going to be long. People will be shaking your hand in congratulations. In congratulations. In congratulations. Help me to shake four hands and say congratulations. Congratulations.